Yeah, this is sad, isn't it? And this is another indication or another reminder, if you needed it, um, all my fellow dudes out there, that you just have to keep your horny horniness, horny levels to somewhat manageable. Does that make sense? No, this is yeah, this is somewhat a, a reminder to all the guys out there that watch my podcast, especially ones that work in the entertainment industry or work in any sort of niche industry they may be. Look after the women in your scene. Look after them. Don't take advantage of them, even though you're in the scene and you see them often. And sometimes we see somebody too often. It sort of, you know, skews how you look at them sexually and, and in terms of relationship wise. But treat the women in your scene like queens and princesses that deserve to that they deserve to be treated as and make them feel as comfortable as needed. And then on top of that, also treat the people that work, you know, um, to facilitate whatever scene and industry that you're in, treat them with even more respect because you never know, you know, the guy that's parking your car outside, the guy that's kind of, you know, picking up your bags for you, the person that's, you know, you're exchanging emails with that's an assistant, they also might end up being a very big play in industry or not even that, just, a, just kind of give respect to everybody within your little scene and try and be the most kindest, nicest person that you can be. Because if not, and you're not able to put that into effect and also not able to somehow control your levels of horniness and thirst, you might be in a position where you not only cat you know, catastrophically impact your own career, but also directly impact the career of a co-star and somebody you deem to be a friend in a, you know in a, in a TV series that you know I didn't really watch, don't get me wrong, but I don't think there were many TV series out there at the time with two black leads that didn't happen to pertain to just, you know, drug dealing and gang banging. They had a real good show on their hands that was obviously going to go on and on to be probably a big success and more, you know, they were able to show and prove and get the ratings up and better writers on Malarkey. And it's all been fucked, all been completely fucked because of No Clark's inability to control himself within his own little industry, allegedly. It's courtesy of Sky News. It says No Clark bulletproof cancelled by Sky after misconduct allegations against actor. So again, Asher D, um, you know... Ugh, I feel so sorry for him. You know what I mean? He has nothing to do with this whatsoever. And now a big part of his complete rebrand, the fact that he got so buff, look how ripped he is now in the moment, considering how old he is, probably had a big part to play. Um, the reason why he probably did it was because of this series that he was involved in. And now all of that hard work, all that dedication, all those ungodly hours spent developing, producing, pitching a show has been completely eviscerated because your co-star and your friend's inability to keep his dick in his pants. Annoying. It goes here, um, TV police drama, Bulletproof has been cancelled by Sky after allegations of misconduct against one of its leads, No Clark. Three series have been already aired, right? Uh, and a broadcaster previously said that it was halting work with the actor, director, and producer following the accusations. Sky now has confirmed it does not intend to produce any more seasons of the show, which also star top boy actor Ashley Wars, aka okay, Asher D. Like, how cutting is that? A company spokesman said Sky will not be producing any more series of Bulletproof. A production company Vertigo Films has also said it will not make any future series of Bulletproof, according to Variety. The publication said it was understood. It's understood the season four had already been commissioned and was in pre-production stages when I accusations against Clark were published. 20 women who knew him in a professional capacity made the allegations of bullying and sexual harassment against him, which the paper reported following an investigation. Days after the allegations emerged, Clark was accused by multiple women of sexual harassment on the set of Doctor Who and at a promotional event. It just doesn't stop, does he, man? Jesus Christ. The actor played vehicle technician Mickey Smith from 2005 to 2010 in the BT Sci-Fi show. He has said that he vehemently denies allegations of sexual misconduct or criminal behaviour, but will be seeking professional help and has apologised deeply for his actions. Just imagine what it must be there for his family. This is what I mean sometimes with, with people and this misconduct stuff, right? Fair enough, cancellations is wrong, but putting yourself in this position is bad enough for you when it finally the truth does finally come out because it looks like for the most part no matter how long time elapses the truth does finally does the truth inevitably does come out the victims definitely do end up speaking they get the courage to come up in front of camera and just basically tell their story but just imagine the turmoil these sort of things cause a family just imagine the amount of hurt that's going on behind the scenes, right? The amount of trust that's been broken, trust that maybe will never be repaired ever again, right? Like, it's just shocking. And if I remember correctly, don't I remember seeing a video of like Ashley Waters moving into a mansion recently, a new home. Again, new body, new home, new cars, maybe partly in due, uh, 
partly um, due to the success of the show and it getting some good early reviews and you getting the word behind the scenes that, oh, you know what, Sky are going to pick it up for another two seasons. You're already calculating how much money is going to come in. Like being an actor is just horrendous, isn't it? If it's not somebody, if it's not one of your co-stars, you know, being cancelled for sexual misconduct, it's just, you know, suddenly something happening in the world and your show flops, right? There's nothing you can actually, it's not within your actual control. So all that money you are counting on, all those things that you're planning on doing are always kind of like in limbo because you're never really sure. You can have the biggest show in the world and it can still get pulled underneath your feet. Like, it's just horrendous to go through. Especially something like this is so avoidable, right? It's so avoidable. Like, I don't know, man. It's just so disappointing to see this sort of stuff. Waters38 previously said on social media that he was in shock and deeply saddened by what was said. He said, I could never condone behavior of this nature, neither or nor in the workplace. And whilst No has been a friend and a colleague for over the years, I cannot stand by and ignore these allegations. After the allegations against Clark were published in The Guardian, the BAFTA suspended his membership and suspended his membership, you know, suspended it. All right, cool. <laughs> and he's already said, I'm, st I'm standing bridge contribution to Cinema Award. Um, that must have been so odd, isn't it? Picking up a BAFTA, knowing full well the story is going to come out. That takes some guts, isn't it? That takes some, that takes some levels of narcissism that are just on an, another planet, right? He knew that allegations were going to come out and he still was willing to go on stage. Like, even if I was, even if I knew the allegations were false against me, the last thing I want to be doing is giving people another attack vector to attack me with. I'd be, um, I'd be at home devising a plan of how I can counteract these allegations and prove them to be lies as opposed to going on stage and collecting an award knowing full well that all these people that are sucking you, sucking you off and kissing your ass are not going to be anywhere to be seen when you go through some of your darkest moments, right? Because that's the other thing too. All the hangers on, all the breaders, right? The people that were saying, I'm proud of you, no Clark and that malarkey. Where are they now? Where are they? Are they comforting him? Are they supporting him and his family? Are they looking after his kids whilst he's what him and his wife go through it? Probably not. Probably not, innit? Friends, I'm proud. Sod off. Um, Deputy Chair of the BAFTA, uh, Dame Pippa Harris told Sky News she was absolutely stands by Chair, um, whatever that name is, and Chief um, Executive Amanda Berry, who, with guidance from the organization's board, went ahead with announcing Clark. Honor, we went ahead with uh, honoring Clark after they had been made aware of the allegations because the information given to them was anonymous or second hand. So that that that's obviously one of the most unscrupulous things about entertainment. It gives you a real highlight and indication into why you shouldn't really be congratulating or kind of applauding anybody but the victims that came out. Forget all these you know papers and these organizations. They're all a whole bunch of bullshit, right? Because. The, the Guardian, if I'm not mistaken from the article, they alerted, right, um, the BAFTA about the allegations, told them what information they had, and still they went ahead and honoured him at the award show anyway, right? And they're still making excuses by it, still doubling down on the fact that they honoured somebody who they, you know, it's clearly been proven has some sort of um, issues when it comes to dealing with women within his industry, allegedly, right? Uh, just horrendous stuff, man, horrendous stuff. So, yeah, um, prayers out for Ashley Waters hopefully he gets something else and bounces back from that but it must be such a bummer man developing such a what looks like gonna be a pretty decent show something that would easily go on for a few seasons and then having it pulled un from underneath your feet because your co-star you know couldn't keep his horniness levels down to a bare minimum like it's just unforgivable it really really is unforgivable that's that's the sort of thing where you have to be like you know if I was your friend I might be like you know what I might have to stop being your friend because I have a big you know, I hate when people are coming out, especially, you know, recently you have Seth Rogen coming out saying he's not going to be, you know, James Franco friend anymore after what he went through, blah, 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 blah. But so most things I probably be forgiven of, but when it comes to stuff like this, knowing how hard it must be for, you know, young black men to put together, you know, proposals for TV shows, let alone it, have it green lit and have it get some favorable reviews to begin with and then having it taken away from me because one of your co-stars is too horny. I, I, I couldn't forgive you for that, especially after I just bought a mansion, you know, promised my kid I was going to take her to this private school whatever it may be and now you're messing up the entire thing like god damn it god damn it